Crims, who played in Fnatic from the summer of 2014 up to after E-League this year, so roughly about like two years or so, two years and a bit, has returned to Fnatic. Now, at the time of recording this video, <coughs> it is not certain who he replaces, but it is almost certainly Wenton or Lecro. So, using my usual process, and by the way, Crims was in Godsent, he's now leaving Godsent, coming back to Fnatic. Using my usual process that I think is a good a formula and blueprint for these sorts of breakdowns is you look first at who was cut from the team. Was that a good move? Who's being brought into the team? Is that a good move? And then you look at like the impact on the team that he's joining and the team that he's leaving. So in terms of who's getting cut, like I say, at the moment when this video is recorded, I assume it's going to be Wenton. But knowing the way that Swedish politics work within teams where they like certain players that they think they get along with better, and they sometimes will stick with players that aren't such great fraggers if they think they bring a social component or team play, which is something that Swedes in Counter-Strike history value very highly, it's possible it could be Lecro as well. So I'll address first whether or not it's Wenton. Now, Wenton, Venton, I'm not quite sure how they say it in Swedish because they often pronounce Ws as Vs because they call it double V. Uh... I think Venton is the obvious one who should be cut. I mean, I don't think he has a place in Fnatic. It's not even that he can't play as a pro. I mean, if he was on like Epsilon or something, okay, fine. Maybe this is a fine team for him. It's okay. Maybe he can work at that level. Maybe even on Godsent, he could be okay. Problem I have is in this team, which is built around fragging and a looser playing style, first of all, he's not a good enough fragger. He's actually quite a terrible fragger. He's a really poor fragger over all the events we've seen with the old Fnatic when he's standing in for Olaf and now with the new Fnatic. Then you've got to add in, they say that what they like about him is the personality aspect and he, like, he's willing to do whatever you need to do and sacrifice. All. That's all great, but actually that doesn't have as much of a place in a very loose style of team, which is the, the kind of philosophy they're going towards. So as a result, his impact in that sense, if it's even true, would be reduced. They say also... Like, you know, when they say that stuff about personality and social aspect, that also would be fine if he was the in-game leader. If he was doing a really good job as the in-game leader and he was the tactician and then he filled in some of the gaps here and they had other great star players elsewhere, that also could work. Problem is, he's not. Twist is the in-game leader at the moment and if they switch again, doesn't seem as though Wenton's going to be. Maybe they go now to Dennis again. So... The problem right now is in their team, there's a reason why we always discuss like balancing out teams in terms of firepower and then supportive players and then how the in-game leader mixes into that. So at the moment, Fnatic doesn't have quite enough firepower to make their style work. They don't have enough tactics to make the player base they have work. They could make this player base of these exact players make a w work a bit better maybe with just better tactics and a more strict system, but then they'd lose some of the individual plays that they get. And they also don't really have like godlike enough team play to make this work. So they don't really have any of the columns of CS that you need to kind of build build that temple of great play. Now, if we go, so I think event being removed would be entirely justified. <clears throat> now, if it was Lecro who gets removed, I would speculate it's because he has lack of experience. Seems quite a quiet guy, and so maybe he hasn't ingratiated himself in terms of the impact of his play. He isn't sick enough to make them want to keep him, or personality just isn't standing out to them enough. So he's just a, he's just a fifth guy to them. Now, I actually think this is the reason why I speculate it also could be him. I actually think they only took Lecro because all these players left. Originally, when they thought it was JW going to Nip, and then maybe JW goes to Godsent or something like that. In that scenario, okay, fine, we should take a different player, take Twist or something, right? Or take Rain or whoever. Problem here is, when three players left their team, I mean, they had to scramble and just put players in the team. So I think Wenson, I mean, they can claim me we're already going to bring him. Okay, maybe I can believe that. I don't think so. But I think Lecro, they just picked up because he was available due to the godsent move. So he was, he was a player out there that he could pick up. So I actually think in that sense, that's why he could also be on the shopping block. Now, I actually think overall, removing either of them in theory is fine, especially if it is for Crims, because <clears throat> the current Fnatic lacks enough firepower to be really dangerous they're like decent they're not bad i don't think they're as bad as people think but they're not ever going to be like a top seven team put that way they don't have good enough tactics and their team play is not quite that sick so at least bringing in crims if it's a wenton doesn't even change the firepower maybe increases it if he gets better but at the moment it's the same team play in surely automatically will be a bit better especially because they all actually have history going beyond fanatic in the past to lgb and then tactically Crims can probably do his job within a tactic better than Lecro or Winton. I would speculate because he's been so fantastic in Fnatic when they had tactical teams in 2014 and 2015. So at the moment, 
the current Fnatic doesn't really lose any firepower or change firepower too much because <coughs> the best players in Fnatic at the moment are Twist and Dennis, clearly. Olofmeister is like the third best player in terms of fragging power, but he's not close to his star level yet, and he's still struggling to find his identity in that sense. For example, even figuring out if he's going to AWP, if he's going to hybrid AWP, if he's just going to rifle, he's still trying to find that out. So that's really the question mark for Fnatic in terms of the firepower. You're waiting for Olof to get it together, and if he's not going to get together, then it has to be someone at another position, Lecro or Wenton. Now, in terms of adding Crims, Crims has been terrible in Godsend, especially considered compared to the old level he had in 2015 and then late 2014, he's not a, even close to that. He was a really good player once upon a time and in Godsend, he's been very lackluster, even in a team that's not that good and not playing great opponents. He only had regained his form this year when Olofmeister came back around E-League, then he started getting his shit together. Before that, when Olofmeister left earlier in the year, Crims was having real problems. He was really struggling in that Wenton Plesson lineup. So... I actually think the reason he joined Godsent was because, and this is something people don't quite understand, but if you, first of all, I know things behind the scenes, and if you put it together using what was being said in interviews, there wasn't necessarily a fanatic. It wasn't that he was choosing between this fanatic and the Godsent lineup. What happened was they thought they were going to Godsent, and actually some people, including the fanatic players left behind, thought there might just not be a fanatic. This might be the breakup of fanatic, and like, Dennis and Olaf go to Nip or some other go to some other team go to Phase or something you know in that, that these are scenarios that like it could have been no Fnatic so he wasn't choosing that so to him it made sense to stick with Flusher and JW and think right well, if we go to God if we go to Godsent Prox is going to add in the tactics that we didn't have in Fnatic we'll all get our levels back you know Flusher will be playing how he wants to play JW will become a star again I'll start playing well and then we'll be a really good team I can understand the rationale behind it I didn't think it was that good move at the time I thought Fnatic got the better end of it believe it or not and that they actually lacked firepower and Godsent ironically which is what ended up happening but I do think that it's not ridiculous that he went to Godsent. And as a result, <clears throat> with how badly it's gone in Godsent, basically didn't complete trash on LAN, qualified for almost nothing, except like WESV, WESG finals, they're basically in a scenario where I don't think it's worth sticking with that. The only reason to stick with it was because they had the major spot, right? They had the legend spot. They were going to get a top two seed and they were get, well, a, a top what a top uh, first place seed actually for finishing top four. And they would have had automatic qualification to the major instead of having to go to the minor in a couple of weeks, which... Uh, Fnatic would have had to do, which is something I'll get to in a minute. Now, I will say, I do actually think that even though Crims is bad right now, it's a good gamble because, I mean, he, for most of CSGO history where he's played in LGB or Fnatic, he's been a good player or a very good player. So I think the gamble's pretty solid that he can get back to that, like a decent level, maybe not as good, I don't know, but can get back to a good level. And he's been at his best when playing with Olof Meister and some of the others at certain times. So I think putting him back with Olof helps them both regain their identity a little bit. They've got someone that they can rely on. They have this, they, both of them, that's what made them, in my opinion, the best one-two duo in CSGO history is that they have an insane natural chemistry, like an unspoken Oaken Kim, so yeah, figuring it all out and playing, I'll do this, you do that, and then I'll give you this signal. You No, they just they just play off each other in a fantastic way. <clears throat> it kind of reminds me of, in basketball, the way Kobe and Pau Gasol used to play with each other. That wasn't all planned. They just had a really good, like, mixture of, like, this is the dominant one, this is the playmaker, this is the passive one, this is the one that, like, like follows up the play. Like, they had a great one-two in that particular sense. So... I think it's a good gamble in that sense. You can also add in that Inferno's coming back and obviously they were the masters of the B site there. Also, Fnatic plays Mirage a lot more in the new lineup. They were also the masters of the A site there. So we've got some of the classic sites that you could pair them all together on that are back in, in what you would assume will be Fnatic's map pool going forwards, especially because Fnatic doesn't have the deepest map pool in this particular lineup before Crims gets there. So then we're in a scenario where now, I mean, I made the point before, think of the new Fnatic more like LGB, like running and gunning style with Dennis than Fnatic will now definitely think of them like old LGB because if 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 their Crims rejoins they will have four of the five LGB members that were in that great team that had that sick run to top four at EMS Katowice and only lost to the Poles the champions versus Pro and actually took Mirage the best map for VP off them in like an overtime game and then played the same team versus Pro a couple of games so they finished top eight there so this was a team that had a lot of potential one of the teams with the most potential in CSGO history and unfortunately they broke apart it didn't work out for them just sponsor wise I mean apparently the rumor was they were going to go to Alliance but then Dennis inexplicably just decided to go get a job and, and left so they didn't end up doing that and didn't end up being the Alliance CSGO team so we never really got to see what that team was capable of now we did in a way because Olaf, Crims, Dennis have all been part of Fnatic and we've seen Michael Elgar as well I mean he wasn't in that particular lineup he was in the lineup before <clears throat> 
So it feels like now it would be interesting because we now we'll get to see four of the five players in that line. By the way, for people who don't know the fifth member of that particular version of that, the very successful one, it was Saip. It wasn't actually Makaleli. He was in the version before Adria Quinter that was kicked coming into 2014. So I think that in itself is interesting, but also it means, again, you're not thinking of like Fnatic, you think of him like LGB. So <clears throat> the future of Fnatic and Godsend is obviously the issue here. So I think Fnatic, that's a good move. They still haven't necessarily figured out the firepower thing, but it gives them more options and more chances to improve. I think for them, they have to work their way back up. They have to become like a top eight team, a top six team, top 14, maybe. It's going to be a while, I think, unless things click that they're going to be going to the top. It doesn't feel like it's going to happen overnight for them because they don't have the superstar player, for example, who's the best in the world. They don't have anyone who fits that criteria right now. For Godsent, they're in a lot of trouble. Like, don't pick up Wenton if he gets kicked. Now, if Lekaro gets kicked, okay, maybe pick him up. At least he played with some of you before and he could maybe try out again. I don't think he's super skilled, though. I think the future for Fnatic or Godsent, if they need more firepower and players, is to look at some of the other names out there in the Swedish scene who aren't on... NIP, and by the way, I'd still consider trying to get NIP players if they could, but we all know that those guys are stubborn. And people who aren't on Fnatic, Godsend, or NIP at the moment. So there's actually quite a lot of good Swedish players out there. <clears throat> Let's ask this question. If Makaleli and Nip do well, Makaleli probably joins Nip, right? What if Pith still wants to play? Pith was looking pretty good in NIP before his injury. Why not get Pith if you're in Godsend or Fnatic, if you need a player in the future? Let's say Makaleli doesn't work out and they get Pith. Get Makaleli in. I mean, if you've played in... Uh, if you're in Fnatic, he's played with some of you before. If you're in Godsent, he hasn't. But, you know, you could use an AWPA to take it off JW's hands sometimes. I think that could even work. Then you've got to add in... The one that people never mention is Modi, who's over in Heroic. Heroic are going to have their own issues now with the moves that are going on there. This is a player where we know he's become a, quite a skilled lurker. He's becoming a better and better fragger. Someone surely should consider this guy. It seems like a good player. Then we've got the players from Epsilon. And I think there's three names in Epsilon, depending on what role you want filled. So if you want a primary AWPer who's going to be a stable style AWPer, but a good player, still needs to develop a bit in terms of big games, I would pick Draken. I think he's a really stable player. Like That could be a player for Fnatic, for example. If they want a stable AWPer, put him in there and have the rest of them rifle. Then you've got Disco Doplan. Now, I think Disco Doplan might be a little bit more skilled than Draken. He's more of a rifler. He's more like a semi lurk player. The issue I have with Disco Doplan is I think he's good, but at the moment he's very streaky. And it's not like he is super young. People are taking the fact he's a rising player. It's like, oh, he's super young. Not necessarily. So I think he's worth a gamble if you're godsent. Certainly, I think that would be, actually be a good pickup for, to try and get some extra skill in the rifle positions. And then the last one, the one that no one really mentions from that team is actually Freddie B. This is a guy where he doesn't have to play a superstar role, but he's going to have breakout games where he just drops. 13 has like a big game so I think for someone like a godsend if you want Flash and JW to be your stars or Fnatic where you want Dennis and Twist maybe have put in someone like Freddie B who can team play can play around these guys doesn't have to have all the resources and the star focus but can give you big fragging performances too as well although admittedly I don't know how he'd do on the top tier one level if he's in that position but I think those are people they have to consider and I think particularly Godset needs to consider some of those players because they are legit firepower now not waiting for JW and hoping that you know, Schneider gets it together. These are players now that can give you firepower. Now, the main issue with this video that I want to get to now is I, I have a huge problem with this move, not on the basis of should he join that, shouldn't he? On the basis of if this means that Fnatic now gets the major spot back, the legend spot, and Godsent loses it. Because if that happens, that means Fnatic no longer has to play in that minor that they were invited to in two weeks. That means that Godsent, what, in theory now, will they get Fnatic's invite and they have to now play in the minor, which they didn't plan for in two weeks? I think that's a massive problem in and of itself in that particular sense. Uh... I mean, I think that's bullshit. I don't think you should be able to do that, like, so late in the game, so close to the minor process and the qualification process, etc. Because the minor starts on the 4th of November. So I think that shouldn't be allowed. And in fact, I think Valve needs to look at this, and the fact, even if it doesn't happen, the fact that it could happen, and they have to ask themselves, do we have to make a special clause in the rule for this, a special provision in this? Because otherwise, literally single players now could just ruin everything for opposing teams, for their own team. Like, literally, if people wanted, they wouldn't in theory do this right, but say someone wanted to just fuck up an enemy team. They could agree to have three of their players who have a major spot go to the enemy team, wait until a week before the quote minor and say, fuck you, I'm out of here, and just leave and ruin that whole org. Now, I'm sure that's very unlikely, but it's possible is my point. Now, more likely, and even more of a problem, is that now one player, like a Crims, or any of the other three that joined Godsent, could literally now take total control of his org by holding everyone hostage. His teammates, his team, and his org. He could say to them, you know what, I'm actually sick of playing with Schneider. Well, yeah, so what though? Kick him, or I'll even go to Fnatic and I'll take the major spot with me. You see the problem there, right? 
Even though he only has one of the major spots, because he's the swing vote, he can have mad control over the team and fuck with everyone. Now, again, I don't think that's super likely, but I don't like that it can exist. I think that's not what the major spots were designed for and what the concept of the provision was. So as a result... I think to avoid abuses of power, and by the way, I'll just point out, you know, everyone was up in arms about, oh, EPL and ESL and ECS, oh, the org owns the sport instead of the players. That's such bullshit. They earned it. Well, yeah, now players who've earned spots in majors can have that stolen by other players. Every single system is open to abuses of power. So you can't act like it's only one thing that is, has those problems. Anyway, the point I want to make is this. I think what Valve needs to do is put in place a rule and the rule will go like this. This is my version of the rule. When you earn a major spot in a team, if you then leave that team for good, you go to another team and play there, you lose that spot. Now, my problem here is immediately there's going to be an issue where you still need three of the five to get the spot. So that means in theory, if someone leaves your team, you can't then just kick another player and then hope you can get him back. Uh, kick two of them, rather. So in that sense, there's only four spots left and we need three a year to make it the next major. I still think that's a better compromise because the key detail there is once you leave for good and you commit to going somewhere else, you don't get that major spot anymore, so you can't fuck around anymore in that particular sense. Now, I will say the issue I have with that is that people will say, doesn't that really just make it the org again that has the spots? And it does and it doesn't, because I'm still saying it's a compromise of the two. Like, the org has the spots as much as you have to play for that org. But if you leave this org, the org doesn't get the spot no matter what if, if they don't have at least three of the players. So it's a compromise between the two where the two have to work together. So that's my version of, of stopping abuse. And also, by the way, obviously wouldn't allow a godsend scenario, unfortunately. If you want to go elsewhere, then start afresh. That's the way we're going to have to do it to stop this sort of abuse. Because if this, this provision was not intended for scenarios where people could leave and then decide it wasn't working out in their new team and just come back right before the major and get right back in and have a team in that major. That's not what it was designed for and it's being abused in that sense. Like, I actually think, here's another bold one. <clears throat> I don't think Glaive should have a legend spot right now. He was only a stand-in. He was never intended to be a real player in Astralis. Therefore, I don't think he should be able to go, go over to Roic, and then if, as he does now, joins Astralis just before the next major, they get to have one of their spots carried. I think that as soon as he finished standing in, he should lose his spot, and they should have had to take three of the other four players. That's my opinion, and that's what I think the only... At, at the moment, when I've tried to figure it out, no one else has come up with a better one. That's what I think is the best compromise to avoid as much abuse as possible. And so I think it's bullshit that they're allowed to do that in this particular sense and i wish valve would step in and do something as long as they don't do something idiotic obviously